Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise of religion. That is two, those are two kind of, well, one's a right and one's a, one's a limitation. Okay, so the government cannot establish a religion. That's called the, anybody know what that's called? It's called the Establishment Clause. You want to teach this class for me, Paul? <laughs> That's called the Establishment Clause. Very good. And then uh, prohibiting the free exercise uh, of, uh, of religion is the secondary clause. It's called the Free Exercise Clause. Okay? So, um, freedom of religion is the most cherished uh, freedom that we have in the United States. It is our... Um, strongest, for lack of a better word, civil right. Okay, it's protected to a great degree. Okay, the ability to practice your faith. Why is that? Why is that? Yeah, Paul. Right. Right. I mean, it's part of our DNA as a country, right? Freedom to practice your faith goes to the very essence of the reason for the founding of this country. It's very unique to the United States, right? This idea that I can come here and practice as I wish, that I can build a house of worship equivalent to other houses of worship, that the government cannot tell me what religion I have to practice, that no religion gets more preferential treatment over another religion, this is, to this day, a very foreign concept in much of the world. In some parts of the world, when you're a citizen there, you have to list your religion on your identity cards, on your passport, your greed card, whatever, whatever the equivalent is. You don't have to do that in the U.S. Your religion is not tracked by the federal government. Do you know why it's not tracked? There's a practical reason for it not being tracked beyond the constitutional issues. Anybody know why? That's right. You could be atheist tomorrow, right? You could, you could convert to another religion. People do it all the time, okay? So that, the founding fathers, there was, there was written, the founding fathers were, to a large extent, given the times, not religious people, okay? So Thomas Jefferson, for instance, was not a religious person. And when they wrote much of the Constitution, they also kind of understood the fact that religion is permeable, it changes, it's different for different people. Right? And this is why it doesn't make much sense to discriminate on the basis of religion. Right? 